Greetings, peace, love, can you dig it, dynamite, out of sight, you guys rock, so come on, rock with me, baby, and let's do some pin talk, pin review, I'm Larry the Pin Bug Guy, welcome to Larry's Fountain Pin Review, and I'm digging in the scene because I'm in my moment with fountain pens, and a special thank you to Jim Hines for sending me this pen for review. Got to send it back to him. So let's get on with this review. Now this pen is a large pen. No, it's a mammoth pen. It's a big pen. It's a pen that you know you have a pen in your hand. So, this pen has the weight, comes in at 28.8 G's, nice weight to it. Now let's look at this beautiful pen. This is a beautiful pen. The length of this pen capped is 6.08 inches. And then when you post the pen, let me show you. It posts very deep. And it comes out to be 6.5 inches. Now that kind of reminds you of the old Delta that was out at one time. They had this big large pen like this. If you go back in the day of Delta, they had one just like this. And I know that to be true because I had one like this, this size. Great pen. I had to sell it. Now I wish I hadn't. Now, let's talk about how girthy this pen is. This pen has some width to it. And this is what I like. It's not just a large pen. It's got some girth to it. And I like large girthy pens better than long slim pens. So this is this is a piece of work right here. Uh, the let's say let's start with the cap first. And the cap is gonna be 18 millimeters. So we had a ninth girth working through the cap. And then when you go right down to the barrel, it's going to be 16 millimeters. So you got some ninth girth working throughout this pen. Mammoth pen, beautiful pen. It's got a nice sturdy clip on it. And then let's just travel up the cap and let's look at this beautiful colors in this pen. The material of this pen is... Alumilite. Thank you, Mr. Announcer. And the blank is called Birthday Cake. And it's made by a gentleman from Louisiana named Seth. Is that Owsley? Oh. Owsley. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I got that one right for a change. And the company is the Swampwood Products. So, Mr. Seth... Great job on that blank. Really a good looking blank you came up with. And Jim put the finishing touch, made an incredible, large, girthy, beautiful pen. So why does it have to be a girthy pen? Well, there's people who like big, large, girthy pens. And what's good about this pen, for people that have arthritis in their hands and they like to write, but they need a large, girthy pen to hold on to, this is the answer right here, plain and simple. And if you, you don't have to post it because the barrel is long enough, but if you want to, you can. And it fits nice and easy in your hand. So, and it's not going to come off one bit. It's in there to stay. So, and then as you go down the, the barrel, it's, not really a, a step off. It just goes right into where the threads are and they're not sharp. And then right below the threads, you're going to find the grip. It's not a large grip, but it's a nice girthy grip as well. And this will accommodate large fingers. And I hold my pen right about here. So, and it works fine. Now, this pen, Jim installed uh, a broad nib make sure I'm right. Yeah, this is a broad nib. And uh, now, 
there's an extra charge for these for the broad nibs. I believe it's $40. Uh, so if you just get a regular steel nib, that's $40 less for just a steel nib. Okay, so that's cool. Beautiful red nib. So you got a really good close up with that. So you can see the detail. Now let's get a real good close up of this pen. See if we get all these beautiful colors in it. I'll just turn it around. And like I said, it posed very deeply like the old deltas did. And when it's posted, it really isn't that long. Show you again. Wow. And now that's not a bad fit right there. So, yeah, it may look scary when you see it capped like it is. But it looks rather well. Despite the size, it works. It works very well. And hopefully Jim will have this at the Philadelphia Pin Show so people that's going to the show can see this with your own eyes and get to hold his pen. And then you'll say Larry from Fountain Pen Reviews was saying how such a nice pen it is. And he's right. Of course I'm right. That's my job, to tell you the truth, what I feel about a pen, okay? And I'll tell you what I don't like about a pen, but this pen, it has a clip. And what do you call me, Mr. Announcer? The clip what? You made up a name for oh, me. Oh, the, the pen clip guy. Yeah, he called me the pen clip guy. I, I got to have a clip. I, end of story. And here's a clip. I like girthy pens. Here it is right here. Beautiful pen. And even if it was cut down a, an inch or so, it'd still be a nice, girthy, beautiful pen any way you look at it. So, I've written with this pen for long writing section, uh, sessions and didn't get numb, tired. Uh, it uses a number six Jovo nib that unscrews. So you can just order another nib from Jim. He'll come with the, the feed and just screw it in. You get a different size with it if you like. The, new, the nibs are, are smooth, nice and wet. And we'll do a writing sample here in a minute. So again, if you have arthritis and you're looking for a pen that has some girth that's large that you can hold in your hand, here it is right here. And maybe this, not, this may not be your cup of tea, but you do need something girthy like this. Get a hold of Heinz Pens. He can make you something girthy like this. Beautiful pen, though. It really is. You know, I think what really does it in this pen is when that purple and orange swirl gets involved in it. It just makes it pop with the greens and reds and the silvers. They just beautiful work. Let's get a real good detailed look at that colors. Can we get that? Is that a yes? Dun 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 dun. <laughs> And look, the finish on top, nice, shiny. And let's look where the clip fits on to the finial. There's, it fits in nice and snug. There's no, nothing opening there. It's all sealed perfectly. And, uh, you know, years ago when Jim was doing this, uh, yeah, there was a pen that uh, every now and then that you would see a, a slight little opening there. But Jim now, as you can see here, has corrected all that. You know, you you correct things as you go along, finding what needs to be corrected, what needs to be improved. And Jim is always doing that. He always wants to go to that next step, go to that next level. Jim wants to make his customers happy, content. 
that's his dream because you'll come back and you'll want another pen. I know I am really content with the pens I've had Jim made me and he's working on one for me now that I will soon have and show it to you. But uh, the one that uh, we named the Starless Night, I have it in my desk in the den. Beautiful pen. <laughs> I mean, it's got a medium still lip to die for. And I've just been using it. But this pen, my friends, and the name again, Mr. Announcer? Uh, that is the Avancio. Is really a beautiful pen. And uh, back to Seth, the guy who did the blank. Jim was saying how great of a job he did mixing five and six colors in consistent patterns, which he did. He did do that right here. So, Seth, a special thanks to you. Great job. Amazing blank. Keep doing the good work. Mr. Hines. I salute you, my friend. You knocked this one out of the park. It takes time to achieve your goals. You set your standards, and I believe that you did it on this one, so you get a thumbs up. And I've been trying to find anything that I don't like about this pen. And to be honest with you, there's nothing that... I can find that's wrong with the pen because it's just a great pen. You know, I don't try to find things wrong with pens and just really jump down whoever sends me a pen and down the pen. If I find something that I don't like, I want to make it clear that it's just me, my opinion, like the clip thing, that's me. But if there's something that needs to be addressed, I will bring it to all my viewers' attention so they will know about it. And I'm not trying to down anybody. It's just that when I'm doing the reviews, I need to be honest with you folks. Because, you know, I don't want you to come back and say, well, Larry said it was a good pen, and this pen, yeah. So, Jim, enough said with this. This pen will do the talking for you. Enough is said about this pen. No more needs to be said. Great job. What we're going to do next, we're going to do some writing. But before we do that, let me let me just set this up with some other pens to show you what the mammoth pen looks like. Okay? Does that word scare you? Nah, I like that word mammoth. Beautiful pen. So, here's one of my larger pens. The... Monte, Monte uh, Verde de Sequoia fountain pen. And here's my beautiful Jin Hao 159. I love this pen. Okay. So you can see that the John Sequoia is no match for the... Evancio. And the Jin Hao is no match for the... Evancio. Very good, Mr. Nelson. You get an A. So... Now let's talk, we're talking length. Now we're going to talk girthy size. Even on the, on the girthness, the... Evancio. Wins. But it just shows you the size of the pen and the girthiness. But you know, the Sequoia and the 159 has a bit of girth to it as well. And just for the kicks, I just wanted to Bring out my old, good old Snyder fountain pen because of the length, not of the girth, just to show you that it's just a little bit short, shorter, not that much, and let me see if I can get that for you here, all right. Let me just see right here. Seven point five, I'm thinking. 
So it's not very much off as far as lengthwise. We're not talking about girthy, okay? So now let's get to the important part because like I've said over and over again, if the nib of a pen is not any good, then in my opinion, at least for me, I would have a worthless pen. I, you know, I can't stand a dry, scratchy pen. Can't tolerate it. I go, I go nuts. When I buy a pen, I like it to be smooth. Yes, they're all not going to be as wet as I like, so I'll get them to be made wetter. But I don't like them skipping bath tarts. You know how that is, right? So, uh, I'm going to be using some Visconti Blue Ink, which is really a beautiful blue ink in my opinion. It only took me over a couple of years to finally decide to try it, and I loved it. So, here we go. We're going to use uh, the bottom part of this Rhodia Blank where uh, I did the Bifrost a few days ago. And this is the what pen, Mr. Announcer? Evancio. There we go. Andale. Evancio. Hasta la pluma le Evancio. How you like that, Mr. Announcer? Very good. Thank you very much, my friends. <laughs> <laughs> Yes, all right, so let's do a little bit of writing. Do a few little swirls there. Now we'll do wet test. Yeah. There you go. Nice and wet. No bad starts. The feed and nib work very well together. No ink starvation. Reverse writing. My fault. And you can get some fine variation. But the pen was made to write just like it comes, right side up. Beautiful pen. Down stroke, cross stroke. And I'm not going to try to push the nib because it's uh, not flex, it's not springy. Uh, it's just a nice, smooth, decent pen that, uh, if you're like me and you enjoy a smooth, wet pen, then this is it. The ink I'm using today is Visconti Blue. You know, when I'm with pens and I'm at the house, I just doodle. You know, whatever comes to mind. Messing around with the pen. I get a lot of enjoyment, comfort out of it. Peace, tranquility. Well, that's going to wrap it up. And uh, Mr. Hines, I will get these both pins to you out this week after I clean them. But one last thing before I go. 
Now, these large pins won't fit in all pin cases, so remember that. Now, here's the one of the uh, Giorgio. Girologio. Yeah, Girologio. I'm going to put it in here and show you. If it it's in, fine. That's not the problem. It's not. It's in there really nice, right? But it's a bit too long, so it won't close. So, you know, that might be a problem. But on my other Geologio, right here, when I put it in, this one will be just fine. Not a problem with that one. So, there are some pin cases that it will not work on. And here's one of my knock pin cases. And it wouldn't fit the middle one. It fit the end one. And you can see right there, you can get it in there. And you can put still some other pins in there. So, this would be about the best you could do with this pin case. So, that's going to wrap it up, my friends. Thank you for joining me on Larry's Fountain Pins Reviews, where I, as always, do an honest, open review of any pin, pencil, ballpoint, rollerball, felt tip that I get in. In fact, anything that I review on my channel, I'm going to give an honest review. God bless each and every one of you. Happy 2020. We're starting the year off with a bang. So let's just hope and pray it's a great one. Take care. God bless and see you soon.